Our first guest, one of the 71,000 strong, rocking with the Ravens at the bank. He played eight seasons at wide receiver for those Ravens, the Niners, Eagles, and Panthers, two-time Super Bowl champion and host of Trending Thoughts. It's a great podcast you guys need to download, subscribe to, uh, and listen to wherever you can download your podcast. Tori Smith, how was the bank? It was crazy. I'm not going to lie. I mean, being there, they have all these upgrades and stuff since I played. Their lights all flashing, flicking <laughs> on and off. But the crowd was crazy. I mean, it was freezing cold, but, I mean, it was awesome. And for me, my perspective was completely different. I was there with my son. So watching him in the moment, just being a fan, it was a special day for the Ravens, but even more so for my household as well. From quarter one to when it wrapped up in the fourth quarter, what was the, the big trending thought that you had about this Ravens squad and how this game went? Man, my prediction was they were, they were going to win by double digits, but it was tied at halftime. <laughs> I was like, hold on now. Uh, what's going on? Because, uh, you know, people like to search for reasons as to why a team isn't playing well right away. I think people think it's like this automatic thing, like, hey, the game started, you're going to play well. That's just not how it works. So there's all kinds of excuses. Oh, they had a bye week. That's why they started slow. I'm not going with any of that. The Texans just played well, and the Ravens didn't execute as well. They changed some things up at halftime, like good teams do, and they came out and dominated the second half. But it was fun to watch. Lamar Jackson at his best, I think, if – Anyone in the regular season wasn't convinced that he was the MVP. I think he for sure said, hey, let me remind you real quick. And he was clearly the best player on the field, and it was fun to watch. What happened in the locker room or what happened in the second half that you can point to, as you're mentioning, they're tied up 10-10 even, then they come out and score 24 unanswered. What, Man, why was the team this, different? It's dominating in the trenches, right? It's always a physical game, and... I don't care who your coaches are. You have to execute. Any play is a great play when you execute, right? And I think you're able to see the, the really a shift to more of a quick game type offense, getting the ball out. Um, Lamar had been making plays with his feet the entire time, but they just come, come up a little bit short. They made less mistakes um, assignment-wise and with penalties in the second half. They just came out and played clean football and played Ravens football the way they played all year. And Again, it was just really dominant to watch. And you kind of had this feeling that really 10 points would be enough and – once they kind of put their foot on them real quick in that fourth quarter, it changed really quickly. And the stadium was giving Houston fits. Uh, but I thought they did a good job in the first half fighting. I mean, you run mm -hmm. a, a punt. That shifts the momentum quickly. And the stadium was silent when that happened, by the way. Uh, but Houston did a great <laughs> job going out there. They just battling it out. It's funny that you're talking about all of the things that are that are different, even in just in the stadium, when, from what it is now to when you played. I had uh, Sizz on yesterday, and Terrell Suggs, I was trying to get him to compare it to, you know, his Super Bowl champion team. Like, even just, Roquan and Queen, that's like you and Ray Lewis, and he was not having it. He was very <laughs> adamant. And I think it's, I don't know if that's just taking, maybe it, it's, is, I don't know if it's an, uh, a healthy ego that, like, that was our thing, this is their thing, or it's a healthy ego to say, like, let them do their thing. They're being special. I don't want to have any part of it. I was really interested in that answer. But uh, it's interesting to me, what's, like, the thing that's, that's been the consistent piece that makes the Ravens keep going and it makes it, like, like don't, don't tell me about the differences. Tell me about what's the same. And I imagine it has to do with Harbaugh. I oh, mean, absolutely. Um, that was the first thing I was going to say is culture, right? I mean, players come and go. But when, you ha when you're a part of an organization and you watch their success happen consistently over time, then that's bigger than just the players, right? Like, that's the coaches. That's the coach that's been established even and supported and lived on by those players. And I think when you talk about comparing teams from the past, I wouldn't say it's very easy to point to Roquan leading and think of mm -hmm. Ray Lewis playing the same way. I, I think those comparisons are real. But I, I think, to me, the bigger comparison is they have veteran leaders mixed with young stars that help balance it out. Um, I think they have guys that are out there playing selfless ball. I think about the two Super Bowl teams that I've been on and the receiving cores that were there. We didn't have a single 1,000-yard receiver, hmm. yet our passing games were respected. And I think you see the exact same thing in Baltimore. There aren't any egos around, right? You have their leading receiver is a rookie on a team with – Odell Beckham, on a team with Rashad Bateman, on a team with Nelson Aguilar, three other first-round picks. And does that matter to anyone in that locker room? Absolutely not. They're all there for each other, taking advantage of their opportunities when they present themselves. And you never know whose turn it's going to be. So I think culture-wise, guys that understand what the mission is, guys that aren't worried about individual accolades and stats, guys that are just going out and playing for each other. It's not something you can fake. You literally see it on the field 
with their love and support for each other. And I felt that even being there and watching them in the spring until now. So it's no surprise they're in this situation and they're playing their best ball the further the, the further the season has gone on, which is what you want when you're heading into the playoffs. Anything can happen on any Sunday, but I feel like you're extra confident in this Ravens team. You would be surprised that they wouldn't go and win it all. Absolutely. I mean, when you have the best player in the game, playing the way he's playing, I always say Baltimore protects the ball. I don't know how anyone beats him. That defense is ridiculous. Those guys are <laughs> flying around. I remember in years past, in past, you have to give Eric DeCosta his credit. When one person was hurt in the secondary or a pass rusher, you're like, oh, man, like, what's going to happen here? Now they have so many different guys that they're rotating in. They play great team ball. And McDonald's done a great job just sending guys with the blitzes. And, and they're just playing great individual ball, making plays. They have it all, roster and talent. Roster talent, mm. a great roster with, with great talent and great culture is going to be a winning team. And that's what you're seeing with this Baltimore Ravens team right now. What gives them the edge over the Chiefs? Obviously, home field advantage, maybe talent roster like the receivers. But Rashi Rice is, I mean, coming along. You gave him credit last week. Like, he's looking pretty good. This is a pretty big matchup. And I think a lot of people out there, you're saying Lamar Jackson's the best player. They've got the best. And the Chiefs fans are rolling their eyes, Tori. Yeah. And they should. I'm not going to lie. I love Patrick Mahomes. I said that last <laughs> week. I love Patrick Mahomes. He scares me to death because of his talent, because of how he plays, and they're never out of it. Like, he is one of those players to stick to the Cam Newton thing, theme of game changer versus game manager. He's a guy that elevates the people around him by the way he plays the game. So you can give him a roster that may not be the best in the league, which I would say that team isn't the best overall right now, but I think they're very well coached. You know, Spags does a great job with the defense. You have Andy Reid dialing it up on offense. I mean, I've never heard a single player that hated their experience playing with Andy Reid, right? So with the same thing I mentioned culture-wise, exists and lies with this um, with this team in Kansas City because it fits the exact same mode I was talking about, right? They, their longevity there, they've been sitting in this game. It feels like the old-school Patriots, right? Like they're kind of in that mode in terms of their dominance, and it's been really with that one quarterback there in Patrick Mahomes. So... Have a lot of respect for him, mm -hmm. but the bank's going to be rocking. The bank's going to be ready for him, and that defense is flying around. The Buffalo Bills, right, they had their their little battles with them there, but I do truly feel like this Ravens defense is on a whole other level than the majority of the teams in the league, and it's going to be the best defense that this Chiefs team has played all year long. It's interesting that you've compared the Chiefs to the Patriots because it is this, like, perennial contender, dynasty in the making, big bad wolf thing. Let's not forget Lamar has beaten Patrick Mahomes. He beat him week two of 2021. Like, this is obviously different stakes, different teams, different vibes. But you, uh, again, I mean, your first playoff touchdown was against that Pat squad. Do you remember this? Oh, yeah, I do. I do. Um, uh, tough, tough little loss there. But mm -hmm. uh, those, those screen pass, I remember it. Michael Orr was supposed to come out there and block for me. He couldn't get out in time. So I stopped, knew I was going to be one-on-one, -on -one, made a little move. Uh, got away with what's now considered a face mask. It wasn't on, per on, on purpose. McCourty knows that. Uh, but uh, big time play there. But again, you're talking about a Pats team, man, that they were the gold standard in this league for a while. I think the Chiefs are in that same space. So while I do think the Ravens are going to win, especially coming into Baltimore here, you have to put some respect on the Chiefs and you never know. And they're never out of it at any given point, as long as they have 15 there and his partner in crime, Travis Kelsey, as well. Uh, let's talk about the, the Josh Allen of it all. You bring it up. You say it's just a little bit different. Um, you know, how do the what are the what should they do? I have to sort of address them and say bye to them and uh, talk to you guys in April. Uh, we have Dean Dawkins coming on the show, heartbroken, I'm sure. What needs to change here? Man, I, I don't think it's ever as easy as anyone from the outside makes it seem. Right? You have your <laughs> franchise quarterback there. You have a running game that we had been asking for and wondering where it was for so long. Like, it, it was there, right? And then you have uh, their receiving core that I think is there. My little brother Diggs, which you would never hear me say anything bad about that, Duncan. Uh, You know, they had a game there where down the stretch he wasn't involved as much. And I just came on the show last week to tell you that that wasn't the end of the world. He just had to be there when they needed him most. And unfortunately for this scene, it just fell a little bit short. And I think as long as you have that quarterback, the same kind of thing is for Kansas City. Josh Allen's going to be in that battle consistently and having his team in a place to compete. But they just came up short. And you have to give the Chiefs their credit going on the road, winning in there. I mean, you talk about a missed field goal really kind of changing this game. But they were dueling back and forth. It was never a controlled game that was just dominated by one squad. They were battling, but 
uh, at the end of the day, they came up short, and that just happens. You yeah. showed a clip from our rookie year. We lost in the AFC Championship game that year. Yeah. I thought that was the best team I had ever played on. We didn't win it. We won it the very next year with a team that I don't think was as good as the team that year. So just because your team is good doesn't mean you're going to get it done. You have to play, like you said, on any given Sunday and come out there ready to roll. And I think this Bills team, because of the way they're built, I think they're built to survive. They have to deal with folks in the media and fans yeah. and everyone nitpicking everything that they do. But this is a roster that needs a little more, but it's a team overall that has a chance to be a contender, a, a Super Bowl contender year in and year out. They just got to keep it okay. Like you're saying, in 2011, I showed that play of your touch. And by the way, you're the quickest receiver alive. Like, you're so freaking fast on that play. <laughs> I like, for, I hadn't seen it in the control room, and I just saw it, and I was like, oh, my God. But you, you know, you lost. It was heartbreaking. But the next year, you went and got past them. You got past the big bad wolf, the big brother, whatever it is, and on your way to your Super Bowl. So it definitely can happen. Um, I'm curious your thoughts before we let you go in the NFC. Because I don't know. I don't know what to make of these quarterbacks. Brock Purdy, I love him. We're talking about him as the MVP. Shaky game. Shaky game with the rain. People are talking about hand size. The whole thing, the Packers, you know, um, almost took it to him. Jared Goff, he couldn't have looked better. I have lots of confidence in him, especially in the fourth quarter, which he keeps just, like, baffling everybody with the numbers in the fourth quarter. Which of these two quarterbacks are you trusting more right now to get you a win? Oof. That's a tough question. I think Jared Goff has been excellent this year overall. But I still, I'm still going to buy Rock Purdy. I mean, people have been hard on him, right? I think this backstretch, people have treated him like he's a bum, right? Mm. And that's not the case. I think it's unfair to him um, that he gets criticized for having good running backs, for having good receivers, for having a good offensive line. What's the job of the GM? To put those people around you, right? And he's being penalized by the public for having a good environment, a healthy environment for a quarterback. And I think overall he's played well. Yes, last game wasn't his best game, but that doesn't mean he's not your franchise quarterback. You can win a Super Bowl with him as your quarterback, and I think they stand a great chance at doing it. So I think with Brock Purdy coming there, C-Mac, Christian McCaffrey being healthy, which I will tell y'all week in, week out, one of the best players I've ever played with, this team can compete and beat anybody on any given day, and I see no reason as to why that's not going to happen versus Detroit at home. I expect to see the 49ers in the Super Bowl. 49ers versus the Baltimore Ravens. Ravens. The two best teams, the Torrey Smith Bowl uh, in Las Vegas. I understand you'll be at the bank this weekend. So I will be at the bank, but Kay, I'm not going to lie. I may have to make an adult decision. There. It's tough. My 7 on 7 team uh, with level 82, we're traveling away. Yeah. We have, we have 60 kids that I'm the leader and responsible for mm -hmm. chaperoning them, so... We'll see if I leave early and get to the bank, but tough decision here. Watch the AFC Championship game that hasn't happened in Baltimore since 1970 or be a responsible adult for these 70 kids through our nonprofit work. Do you know I'll what? I already know what you're going to do. <laughs> you're not going to the bank. If I know you, you're not going to go. That's what my heart's saying right now, but we'll see. I'm we'll gonna make a decision. Maybe I'll show up. Maybe, maybe <laughs> I'll show up. Um, okay, we appreciate you, Tori. We got your picks. We got all the intel. We always get smarter from talking to you guys. Go check out the Trending Thoughts podcast with Tori Smith, who, of course, knows these two teams that are going to face each other probably in the Super Bowl.